This week we're obviously still uh, just switching from July into August, so we're still in the holiday period and normal politics uh, is not uh, happening. Obviously Brexit continues, but I think people have had uh, enough of that. But one or two points I just wanted to mention this week. Uh, there's been some good news, some bad news, some mixed news. And the uh, good news, I think, is uh, the report that's just come out from Audit Scotland that the Queen's Ferry Crossing, that's the replacement for the fourth road bridge, uh, has been a big success. And uh, it has come in under budget. In fact, it's come in well under budget if you go right back to what the initial costs were likely to be. Initially, they talked about maybe two and a half billion pounds, 2,500 million pounds, which is a pretty staggering figure. And in fact, the cost has been more like 1.3 billion pounds. So there's certainly been a lot of other work we've been able to do because uh, the bridge came in so much uh, below budget. Uh, there were slight delays with the weather and so on, uh, but nothing significant. And uh, I see that the opposition MSPs are talking about uh, the fact that not all the painting had been completed. Uh, well, I think, frankly, I don't think anybody really cares about that. It's such a minor issue that it shows that the project has been such a success and the opposition MSPs are really struggling to find anything to criticise it about. On a kind of more mixed point of uh, news this week has been the increase in the interest rates, uh, still from only half a percent to three quarters of a percent. And I suppose I've got mixed feelings about that. If you're borrowing money, you obviously want interest rates to be as low as possible. But there's many people in the East End of Glasgow and elsewhere, just ordinary people with a little bit of savings, and they are getting virtually nothing by way of interest eh, on their that, that savings. And that used to be maybe quite important for them, just kind of supplementing their pension or whatever their income was. And to be only getting that level of eh, interest is really pretty grim from their point of view. Um, after all, inflation is somewhere 2-3%. And if banks and others are not paying more than that, then effectively it means that if you're saving, your money is getting less and less worth uh, each year. And that actually, I feel, cannot be right. So uh, far be it from me to ask for higher interest rates, which would really hurt uh, borrowers and people with mortgages and so on. But I do think specifically there needs to be more help for small savers, that they should at least get inflation plus another 1% or 2% uh, on top of that. And then finally, going from good to bad, uh, I think the bad news this week has been the uh, proposal to evict uh, asylum seekers uh, in Glasgow. Now, there seems to be some reconsideration of that, but it's still on the whole is pretty bad news, I think for the whole city as well as for the specific individuals and families uh, who are involved. Uh, there's been a lot of claims and counterclaims going around and I, I do understand some people would say well if they don't have the right to be in this country then surely um, they shouldn't have the right to housing and that could be freed up for someone else. But I think the other way to look at that is that um, many people who then challenge the system and appeal do actually win their cases. And I personally know a number of individuals who are seeking asylum in this country and it seems to me that they have got very good claims, but sometimes these are just dismissed out of hand eh, by the officials in the Home Office. And we come back to the point in the end that Scotland does not have enough people. If we want to grow our economy, if we want to have eh, more buildings, more roads, better public services, more taxation, all of these good things, then we need more people. It is fundamentally very, very difficult to grow an economy without the population growing at the same time and many other countries including England for that matter have a growing population and that makes it easier for them to grow their economy and have better lifestyle better services and so on so one way or the other whether it's through asylum seekers or normal immigration for economic reasons we need more people to come to Scotland and to live in Scotland and I very much hope that this particular issue with the refugees can be resolved